We're into prime traveling season now, and anybody who has a kid knows that traveling with children comes with its own set of challenges. So here to address some of the biggest helpful hints on how to travel with kids is Samantha Kemp Jackson, parenting writer and blogger and parent of a thousand children, I think it Five is now. Thousand. Five thousand. Yes. <laughs> and twins. Identical, yes. They are how old now? They're eight now. Okay. Eight years old now. Are they easier to travel with now that they're eight? Uh, they are a bit easier. There's still some challenges there, but uh, definitely easier than traveling with baby twins, which I've done as well. Well, there was that story in the news fairly recently about that poor, poor woman on the plane. Oh my she goodness. had twins and everybody's heart went out to her. Oh my goodness, my heart hurt for that one, Val, just because I saw her holding a baby. She was crying profusely. She had a baby at her feet in a car seat and uh, nobody was getting up to help her. One man did say something, um, but previous to the actual clip, I think she had been hit in the head with a stroller by one of the uh, flight attendants on, oh on the goodness. airline. So, Listen, yeah. we get it. We're walking onto yeah. a plane with a baby. We feel your eyes on us. We know you're not going to be I've happy. I've had those it. daggers <laughs> stared at me. I traveled to Cuba with my whole family, including my identical twin boys, when they were two, or just under the age of two, because we wanted to get in under before we had to pay. Uh, so we walked on the plane with the two babies, and the daggers were being stared like you would not believe. So we know what everyone's thinking out there. Well, I don't know why people go have a little more compassion for parents flying with kids. So planes in particular, you're kind of trapped. Mm -hmm. What tips have you got for us? Well, I think you need to absolutely be prepared. So whether you are a girl guide or not, make sure that you've got everything under, under control before you get onto the plane. So you have your snacks, you have your child's favorite blanket or blankie. You know, if they're a really young baby, you have their soothers, you have contingency foods, you have new toys that they've never seen before that you can pull out of nowhere so that if they're really freaking out you can say hey look 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 and you give them something of course I'm all about the technology if you have an iPad or a tablet or something that they like to play on let them do it because you know a nightmare at 30,000 feet is something that you can't you don't want to deal with the nice thing is the movement of the plane will often lull them to sleep. So maybe skip the nap earlier, let them have the nap on the plane. Skip the nap, but it's a fine balance, Val, mm -hmm. just because you know, uh, you know you've got a, a child and when they don't have their nap, they kind of pass over into that phase where perhaps they are so cranky, they're crying, they're screaming. And don't forget, there's also the pressure in the plane. So oftentimes very young children, you can't get them to chew gum or, or you know, whatever. So they're going up and their ears are popping, they're screaming even more. So that's why it's really important to have every single contingency planned in it's advance. It's like a chess game. You're it is. To stay one strategy. Side All about strategy. All right. Well, you don't have pressure necessarily to do within a car, but car mm -hmm. trips are just as challenging. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, we do a road trip every year. We drive to Quebec and uh, it's a long drive. Um, and and the boys, well, they're bigger now, so it's not as bad. And we do try to get the entertainment tied off. So whether or not you have in-car entertainment or you bring a portable DVD player or and or always have headphones. Um, <laughs> again, I go to the dollar store just before we get into the car or the plane or whatever mode of transportation. I buy a few little very inexpensive gifts for them, toys, coloring books, whatever. And then I just pull them out randomly when they're starting. I can feel them starting to get a bit antsy. I start saying, hey, look, I've got a new toy for you. And then that quietens them down and, and buys me a little bit more time. Sneaky, but it works. Hey, and whatever gets you through, right? Whatever gets you through the night. Or You've day. got so many wonderful tips and they're all listed in your blog and on your website. Where should we go if we want to to dive into your parenting expertise? You can find me at multiplemayhemmama.com. All one word, the mama is with two M's. You can also find some of my writing on Huffington Post mm -hmm. under my name. Great, great article. Yes. Thank you. Very helpful tips. Thanks so much, Val. Thank you so much. Thank you.